In this episode of Repossessed, Larry Pittman and the agents of Jam Recovery are faced with debtors who have become more evasive and deceptive in hiding their vehicles. Do you own a 2002 Lincoln? No, I don't have a Lincoln. All right, you got some ID? Larry's son, Mackie, is trying to drag Jam Recovery into the 21st century by introducing new devices and techniques to help hunt down this elusive collateral. Do you guys know what a GPS is? Yeah, yeah gold, both pathetic and stupid. New devices could help Larry and his team secure more collateral for his clients. Yeah, I like that. And bring Jam Recovery to an all new level. How'd you guys get that picture? That's irrelevant. It's called technology, my friend. But Larry knows a computer can't convince an angry debtor to give up his car. Dude, this guy's running over. Sometimes it has to get personal. You understand me? Okay. I'll put you Hi. in this dumpster. <laughs> For Larry Pittman and the men of Jam Recovery, the street is their office, a truck, their workspace. They work at night and do everything possible to blend with the shadows. But when you're hunting for cars up for repossession, it's good to have the element of surprise on your side. Tonight, Larry, Rob, and Mackie are out looking for a 2002 Silver Lincoln Continental, registered to an owner in Freedon, New Jersey. Since the job is in a rural, remote area, they leave the tow truck behind and drive an inconspicuous spotter vehicle. All I know is, is that the guy came in, bought the car, made one or two payments, and that's it. It's coming down to now where people are, they're getting desperate and they're, they're losing their homes, they're losing their jobs, and they're hiding this collateral. They're getting more creative, however, they're not gonna get over on us. My clients are not gonna suffer because these people are trying to outsmart us. Yeah. Yeah. That's my bedtime. Sometimes repossession work is intense, but often it's a waiting game. Hunting down leads that don't pay off and waiting for many hours for vehicles to appear at an owner's address. You know, there's some nights that we're out there and you find what you're looking for right away. Other nights you're out there, you hit eight, nine houses and you come back with nothing. Sometimes you get a debtor that's just not gonna hand over the keys and you just gotta wait for them to give them up. Eugene Goldstein. Hello? Hi, how you doing, uh, Mr. Goldstein? Who are you? The kids are sleeping in there. Oh, sure, sorry to disturb you. Mr. Goldstein, I think. I might be. Who are you? What, what are you? Well, I like to What's know. What's the cameras? Hold on. What? They're here for our protection and yours. So are My you or, or are you not Mr. Goldstein? It's a yes or no question. Maybe. Why? What's up? I mean, this guy right away he was obnoxious. He's lying. And, and, you know, and not for nothing, but, buddy, this is not helping your case. All right. Enough of the games. All right. We're here from the bank. We're here for the Lincoln. Lincoln? Yeah. What well, Lincoln? What are you talking about? OK. Are you Mr. Goldstein or not? No, what's this paper? Was this a warrant? Are you guys cops? No. no. It's a repossession. We're here for the Lincoln. We're from the bank, I had said. You just know he's kind of be, being evasive with his answers, kind of being a smart ass, you know, just running out of the mouth. And you could just tell something wasn't right with him. Listen, do you own a 2002 Lincoln Continental? No, I don't Lincoln. All right, you got some ID? No, I don't have any idea on me, no, sorry. Well, you're home. What's this paper? Let me see this paper. It's a repossession well, if you're not order. Mr. Goldstein, we don't have to show it to him. Well, let well, me see. Let me see the paper, all right? Hey, 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 paper. I'll show you the paper. What? Back off or I'll drop you. I just want to see the paper, all right? You got, Easy, My kids Bob. are sleeping inside. You well, got then you you're stop. out here. It's Christmas hey, time. Hey, you're Easy. the one acting ignorant. I got no problem dropping this paper and you. It's a car in the garage. OK. No, I don't yeah, have, I mean, I don't have a car simple? in the garage. You know, this guy, I knew he was lying. You know, he's he's arrogant. He's playing games with me. And all he's doing is he's pissing me off. I'm not wasting my time anymore. Yeah, Let's good. Go. Thank you. Bye. I know he had the car. You know, I just had to find a way to bust him and shut him up. Larry doesn't waste valuable man hours posting three agents outside this residence to wait for the uncooperative debtor to leave in the morning. 
there are other jobs to run, so he heads back to the office with Rob and Mackie to make a plan. You know, that car's in that garage. How are we going to find out unless we sit there all night? I don't, I tell you the truth, I don't feel like doing that. I'll send Mackie. That's unreasonable. Why is that unreasonable? Because there's no reason I should have to go sit outside because you guys can't think of a better solution to this. But you guys are going to send me out there to do it. Yeah, you know, we've already paid our dues. That doesn't make any sense for me to sit out for four right, or five right, hours right, in the cold easy, when easy, there's other easy. ways that we could find a way to oh, do this. tough guy. Then find something that we can use. But I don't understand why we wouldn't get cameras or something. Some, we need some sort of new technology up here because this isn't going to work. Not for nothing, things have come a long way. Think about it. From when I started, we didn't have self-loaders. We had nothing but flatbeds. We didn't have cell phones. We had beepers. But we knew where every payphone was. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe Mackie's on to something, all right? You find the technology that you think is going to work and let me know. Larry was giving Mackie a few days to come up with some modern solutions to age-old problems. In the meantime, they had another job to do. It's a 2007 Chevy Trailblazer in Landing, New Jersey. So where are we off to now? We're going to look for this uh, Trailblazer. I'm starting to bring Mackie out on a lot more jobs, and the reason why is because he, he's learning. You know, I mean, when I learned how to do it, you seen me. You see how I do. I dig through people's garbage and everything. You know, and it gets frustrating. You're out here, you're beating the streets, and, you know, speaking of beating the streets, where are we going? Let me look at my GPS. You guys know what a GPS is? Yeah, yeah. global, GPS. pathetic, and stupid. Global positioning system, come on. You know, talking with Mackie, he's, he's young, he's ambitious, which is good, but the downfall of that is, he lives in his own little world behind a computer screen. And yeah, you just, you can't get someone to give a car up through the computer. There's no reason for us to be sitting out for hours, camping out in front of houses, picking through garbage, you know, trying to track people down on these old ways. And there's stuff right now that make our job way easier. You know, on this road, this, he can be 30 <laughs> feet off the road and nobody will find him, you know that. <laughs> yeah, but I'll hit my GPS locator button and I'll be yeah. good. Yeah, GPS help me, locator button help ain't me. Gonna be no good when it's shoved in your rear. <laughs> The gentleman's name is Mr. O'Donnell. You can be talking. Larry lets Mackie take the lead on this repo. He needs the experience of dealing with debtors face to face. Hey, how are you? Is it Mr. O'Donnell home? No. Well, actually, this is in regards to his payments on his uh, 07 uh, Trailblazer. Uh, the bank has said he has a payment in almost 90 days. So, the order for possession has been issued for his car. Uh, no, actually, he. He left, like, um, a couple of months ago. Uh, to where, if you want me asking? Like, where? To where? He, I, he went to Afghanistan, I Oh, think. so he's active in the service? I, yeah, he left, uh, he was, went to Oklahoma Fort Sill, I think. Do you know if they put maybe a hold on the account? On the account? I, I, I don't know, I, I, I just... He's, so he's, he's active duty then? Definitely, okay. definitely. I, right. I, 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 you know, I mean, I haven't heard from him, but... Okay. No problem. We're sorry to bother you. Come on, man. Thank you for serving. Okay. Yeah. We'll have yeah. the bank give you a call. We'll take care of this. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks. What was that about? The reason that I pulled you away is the guy's in Afghanistan. The Sailor's Relief Act kicks in here. Mackie's becoming a good agent, but with this job, it just made me realize he's still got a lot to learn. There's an act that the government put in the fact it protects the servicemen and their dependents. The Service Relief Act is a wonderful thing. I still do not feel like taking their vehicle because they are serving our country and making life the way it is so that we can live it the way we do live it. I know the laws, Rob knows the laws, and now Mackie has to learn them. What's up? Since we're talking about all this new technology, you know, in the future, I want to talk to you about your future with Jam, and that's why I want you to take the CARS test. The what? The CARS test. What's that? Certified Asset Recovery Specialist test. It's, a, it's, it's like getting your master's degree in the repossession industry. That's what the it is. Repo master's It's the only test, it's, and it's, it's acknowledged nationwide. 
The CARS test is a standardized online certification that, while not required by law, is mandatory for more and more lending agencies utilizing recovery agents. This is something that's important. A lot of clients are asking for it. All right. All right? Mackie wasn't happy about taking the test, but he needs to understand that this is a business. It's not about just jumping in the truck and chasing down cars. I'm going to get you the books. You got two weeks to study. You come right here and you log in and you're, you take the test. Like you see all my certificates up there? All right, yours will be right next to it. I mean, I've always heard about the certification test my dad, Nick, and Rob took, but I never knew too much about it. Now he's telling me I only have two weeks to take it, and that's not too much time. He's saying it's not a big deal if I fail this, but to me it is, because, you know, I want to get this done in my first shot and get it out of the way. This is a big step for me, so. All right, LP. You got it, MP. Last night, Larry Pittman and the repo team encountered an uncooperative debtor while they were chasing down a 2002 Lincoln Continental. Do you own a 2002 Lincoln Continental? No, I don't own Lincoln. All right, you got some ID. They are convinced that he is hiding his vehicle in the garage and are trying to figure out how to get proof and legally collect their collateral. Larry looks to his son, Mackie, for new ideas. You know, I'm old school, you know, but Mackie's trying to implement some new technology. He's studying for his test, like I'm real happy. Um, prime example is today, we're going into Brickhouse Securities. Mackie found this company, and I'm kind of excited about it, especially if it's gonna help me catch uncooperative debtors like Mr. Goldstein. Right here. I'm Todd. Hey, Todd, what's going nice on, Larry? You. Hey, Larry? So, you know, we walk into Brickhouse Securities, and Todd comes out, and the first thing that goes through my mind is, like, this guy reminded me of, like, a mad scientist or banker type of guy, and I'm like, what is he going to do for us? Mackie, I think you were the one who told uh, me you yeah. were looking for some technology. We're looking for some new gadgets, something to play with, maybe okay. make this a little bit easier for us. We'll try and... They're still stuck in the 60s, so I'm trying we'll to speed try and this up a little. at least get you forward to the 80s or 90s. Yeah, so okay, okay. Uh, okay. Um, we may come around to this side and we'll see what we can do. One of the other things people run into is the garage without windows. Yeah. You think the car's in there, you're not sure the car's in there. You don't want to be sitting on it and waiting to find out. Yeah. There are two ways you can verify that. One way is to actually look into the garage. We've got something that can help you with that. And another way is to keep constant surveillance on the garage. Let's start with looking in the garage. Todd shows the agents a night vision snake cam, which allows a person to see behind closed doors or into other inaccessible areas. If you'd like, we can test this out. Yeah, Look into like our server room and works. see how it works. It's a dark room. So you can position that around, get a feel for if the car you're looking for is actually in there. Hey, Rob, this is pretty cool. This right here, this is called the Global Watchman. It's like a hunt camera for a chart. This exactly. is a wireless camera. So this transmits over cellular. You put this on a tree or a telephone pole or in a car across the street from the subject, it'll constantly watch that garage door. The motion of the garage door opening will be what activates the camera and will send pictures to your Blackberry. Yeah, I like that. One of the things people often run into is they know where someone, one of the personalities involved is, but they can't seem to find the vehicle. Is that something that you guys run into? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is what's called the slap and track unit. So in the time it takes you to bend down to tie your shoelaces, you can slap this underneath the vehicle. It'll stick there with these strong magnets. And then from your office or your home, you can see where the car is going on a map. Track it for one or two days. Chances are they'll go to three places, home, work, and the place you don't want them to find. Yeah. Todd shows Larry, Rob, and Mackie a number of state-of-the-art devices with a wide number of applicable uses for the repossession industry. Mackie, this was a good job. This is definitely a good job. Todd will definitely be in touch with you. Thanks for your help, man. Thanks for bringing Appreciate it. Yeah. Good idea. The team returns to the office to discuss testing these devices on actual repo cases. That guy Goldstein, mm -hmm. I'd really like to use the snake cam. You see what's in that garage. I, I don't know about that. We, we got to talk to Laura, check and see if that's even legal. 
The problem is so, some of the stuff might not be legal, like the snake camera. I'm just not sure about it. Uh, we might be violating some privacy laws with that one. So I, I want to hold off and talk to some attorneys first. I mean, you could use the global watchman, though. Throw in the woods by his house. How, how's he going to know? Which one was that? It's like, it's like the video unit. It's got the infrared on it anyway. Now it's going to take pictures as soon as there's a motion. I, I think we need to talk to a lawyer on those, man. All right, let me call Troy. Hey, B. Yeah, Larry from Jam Recovery. Listen, what's Troy's schedule like this afternoon? Can you get me in at 4 o'clock? Fantastic. All right, I'll talk to you in a little bit, sweetheart. Thank you. Bye-bye. She can get us in? 4 o'clock. Right. You're going to stay here and study. I'm going to call Nick on the way down and have him meet us at the lawyers. Wow, we have two jobs down here anyway. Why would I That's why I'm calling Nick, because you need to study for the test. Why are you questioning me? Just please study for the test. Please. Mm -hmm. While Mackey stays back to continue studying for his repossession agent certification test, Larry, Rob, and Nick head to the attorney's office to learn how the laws apply to the latest covert surveillance technology. They bring along some demo devices from Brickhouse Security. Hey, what's up, man? Good, 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 good. Okay, Larry, this is um, one of those snake cams, right? Yep. Technology. All right, and you want to place this under a garage door to see license plate? Yeah, like, let's say there's windows in there. There's windows, but there's curtains, so I can't see in. Could I stick that under the, the garage door and turn it on to look at the license plate? No, because that's going to be an entry. And that, that's the issue you're looking at. That's going to be an invasion of privacy or trespassing. OK. One of these motion cameras. Can I tack this onto a tree facing the garage to take pictures as he's back in the car in and out? By putting that there, that's, that is not going to be an invasion of somebody's privacy. Their legitimate expectations of privacy on the outside of their house or in a wooded area to where you just take uh, photographs, you're going to be all right with that. All right. There's this thing called the slap and track. So where I would activate this, stick it onto a metal surface. Well, Just I'm a GPS for... tracker. GPS tracker. If you're a cop, you're going to need a court order to get one of these attached to a car to follow a suspect or something such as that. But you guys aren't cops. You're private individuals. So to do something like this is going to be allowed. Good. Thanks, Troy. Good? I appreciate right. it. Thank you. All right, Good take morning. care. Thanks very All much. All right, guys. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Take care. The meeting with Troy was very important. I got some clarity on the items that we can use, and I got some real good ideas on how to use them. After obtaining legal clarification on the use of the latest surveillance technology, the agents wait for nightfall and head back to the Goldstein residence. If they can find an ideal location to place the surveillance camera, it should provide visual evidence that the Lincoln is actually at the residence, despite the debtor's denial. And if I find out the guy's lying to me, I'm going to be pissed. Got me lurking around in woods at night, setting up cameras. Do you need any help? No, I got it. The Global Watchman is a device that utilizes the latest night vision, motion sensing, and cellular technologies, all in a compact weatherproof unit. When the unit detects motion, it snaps a series of digital images and emails them to a preset address. Psst. Yeah. I'm gonna set this to take a shot. Let me know if it's aimed at the doors. Okay? Good. Rob sends a test picture to Larry's cell phone to ensure it is aimed at the debtor's garage. Perfect. It's set straight? Yep. All right. Yeah, it's working. All right, let's get out of here. You know, Mr. Goldstein didn't think that we were going to pursue it. He thought that he got over. And the bottom line is, any other time, we would have sat on that house and waited. But now, thanks to my son, I have a little gizmo that I can be in another place doing another job, and I have a gadget that's my eye in the sky for Mr. Goldstein. The next day, Larry gives Mackey a break from his studies and takes him out on a voluntary repo. The collateral is a 2008 black and chrome Harley Davidson. Well, this particular job right here is a, um, the guy fought bankruptcy. 
This is a Chapter 7 bankruptcy case, which means the debtor must liquidate all assets the courts have deemed non-essential. In this case, the Harley is non-exempt, and the debtor, by law, has to give it up. You know, people's Harleys are like their kids. You know, you're not just gonna hand your kid over to somebody and say, here. Let me tell you something, a voluntary could turn into a, a, a inval real quick. I always mentally try to prepare for every job that we're going on, because you don't know what's going to happen. 30 right here. And here's the magic number. Yeah, I got it. Larry and Mackie arrive at the location to find the debtor waiting out front with the Harley that is up for repossession. Just let me find it real quick. Larry checks the vehicle's VIN number to be 100% sure that this is the correct motorcycle. After he gets confirmation, he just needs to take it back to his holding lot, hopefully without any trouble from the debtor. What happened? You just claimed the bankruptcy and... Yeah, business died out, business got really slow with the economy, and I just couldn't afford to keep up with the payments. What are you gonna do? You gotta make some sacrifices, you know? It's more important to be able to afford to stay here in my house and take care of my kids than it is to have that motorcycle, so I just let it go. I'll um, let the bank know we picked it up, and um, you'll get a letter in the mail. All right. All right, man. Cool? All right. I've been riding bikes for 25 years. I truly feel bad anytime I take somebody's Harley away or take somebody's motorcycle, period. But I got a job to do. That's what pays my bills. I could have put that bike on a trailer, but, you know, it was a nice day for a ride, so I rode back. While the repossessed motorcycle had enough fuel to get all the way home, the pickup vehicle did not. Larry and Mackie pull over to fuel up. That was good. That was interesting. Yeah, that was good. I've never seen such an easy repo. They're not, but they're not all like that. You know, that was a voluntary. The guy just giving it up. It's, you know, it happens. But that doesn't happen often, does it? What's up, boy, man? I mean, we get them, but not every day. All right, where are we headed next? Home. Just right to the house? Yeah, home. Call a client, do the condition report, send it over, and um, bill out the job so we can get paid. All right, cool, cool. This was a pretty easy repo. Hardly the norm for Larry and his team. But the job wasn't done. Since this is a new client for Larry, he wants to get the condition report filed within four hours. Unfortunately, their pickup vehicle had different plans. The linkage keeps dropping off here. I know. Our Explorer, the gas linkage keeps coming off. So, you know, I'm going up the road, I'm giving it gas, and pop. All right, I got to get order a new clip for it. My dad's a savage, you know, he came in, popped the hood, started going to work with his bare hands, just ripping things off, putting them back together, piecing them in. Next thing you know, the car's running the ground, and he's just standing there like, oh, let's ride. All right, we're right around the corner from the yard, come on. All right, let's pull up this main road. Just be easy with it, Mackie. Yeah, I, I wasn't even pushing it. Yeah, just feather it. Good thing he was, ahead, he was ahead of me, because I couldn't tell you what was wrong with the car at first. The truck just barely made it back to the yard. Now it was time to run the condition report on the Harley. So when you do inventory, do you have to mark everything? Yeah, just put down for mileage. Mileage is very important. The bike's got 3,500 miles on it. Like you can see, there's no major scratches on the paint. The paint's all good. The pipes, pipes got a couple scratches in them. A couple minor scratches on the frame. Make sure you put down aftermarket pipes, Vance and Heinz. So if we're going to turn this in eventually, why do we have to? Because now the bike's in perfectly good condition. Now the transporter comes and picks up the bike. He drops it while he's loading it. We're putting down everything on the condition report right now. So have you read anything about motorcycles in your book? About doing inventories or anything? Uh, about for bikes? No, I didn't think so. When you get done doing the inventory, start studying that book, please. 
like this car certification test, I guess, so that every every account wants to know what you're capable of and what you actually know. So now they're putting me through this test where I'm gonna have to read, you know, check up, go through different rules, regulations, and stuff that you can and can't do as a repossession agent, so. What? Got some weight to him. I gotta read both of these? 50 pages? I can't go out because I have to study for this field certification test. You know, I have to do this or I'm not gonna be able to go out on my own, you know? I gotta pass this and hopefully I can do it in the first try so they think I'm not playing around, you know? It's rough, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to take in, but it's gotta get done, you know? I have to get certified so I can go out. It's something I have to do. I, I can't just keep beating around the bush saying, oh, I don't wanna do this, I don't wanna do this, you know? Because this is my career. You know, I could, be, I could be out there making money, I could be out there kicking doors, you know, following work I've been chasing, but no, I'm here and this sucks. Jam McCarthy, can I help you? Hey, what's up, Charlie? It's the boat and the trailer. Okay. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, Mac, look at this. But this is a Malibu wake setter. This is it right here at the top of the line. It's an $80,000 boat. What's up? Let's go do this. You're going to study for the cars uh, for the field recovery agent test. Hey, what are you going to do with the boats there? I'm going to take it. Probably by yourself. No, I'll meet up with Nick and Rob. I'm right here. What am I going to do? All right, let me ask you this. What's the dress code for a field agent? I don't know. Okay. I, I'll get there. I just started reading this. Why don't you want police be involved with the repossession? Because it makes it a wrong for repossession. No. Study. Please fix my printer. Please. You want all this stuff done, but you're going to leave me back here. That's why you're staying here. I'll see you later. Yeah. Any complaints? You know what a complaint department is. Oh, yeah. Peace. Whatever. It sucks. Jam Recovery has received a call to find and retrieve an $80,000 speedboat, whose owner has fallen behind in his payments. Larry, Rob, and Nick head to the marina where the boat was last seen. Instead of looking for it among the hundreds of boats, they head inside to see if anyone knows anything about it. Hey, what's going on? What's up, man? Not my good nuppy with you. Hey, winterizing that boat there? Yeah, winterize, shrink wrapping. Shrink wrapping. Putting her away for the winter. That's, that's a nice little torch you got there. Yeah. Hey, uh, we're looking for a Brian. You know Brian? Yeah. He told us to meet him here. I mean, is he he's in we're trouble? I mean, what's with the? No, we're supposed to be picking up his boat. I mean, where is Brian? I mean. Well, he told us to meet him here. All right. Well, when Brian when Brian comes in, I'll. I'll be glad to show him where his boat is. Oh, right. I mean, I can't. I mean, it seems like I, how I, how do I know you guys aren't stealing his boat? I mean, no, well, yeah, no, no, no. no. Coming to meet well, us, so. you know, kid's not stupid, so he wasn't giving us too much information. But you know, we chit chatted with him for a little bit. We got just enough intel to bring us to the one step closer to getting that boat back. We're just we're just gonna meet with him, hook up his trailer, and go get his boat with him because you need a, you need help getting the boat. Yeah, it's fine. I mean. I mean, I, I should be telling Brian this, not you guys, but he owes us, he owes his trailer storage. Yeah, okay. The, the trailer's been here since April. He launched his boat in April. He normally comes back in the fall. I mean. And he hasn't come back yet. Okay. Right. right. I mean, it's gonna be 15 degrees tonight. That lake's gonna freeze solid. If he doesn't get his boat here soon, I mean, it's gonna be frozen in the lake for the winter, or he's gonna, I would expect him to come take it out. Okay. You know, the lake's about to freeze over. Once he put that boat on that trailer and they shrink wrap it like we saw the kid doing, I don't know where that boat's going. So we got to figure out something fast. Boy, you're comfortable. Mighty comfortable. Did you fix the printer? Yeah, the printer's good. Right. So what'd you guys find out about this boat? Oh, please. please. Nothing? It's somewhere on the lake, man. It's somewhere on the lake. It's somewhere well, it's a boat. Lake. Where else it's is it? It's a boat. Where's, there? yeah. There's a trailer there? Don't know. Well, the guy said his trailer was there. If we go back and look for the trailer. What time did that place close? Because we're going through that afterwards. 
there's no fence or nothing. We can just walk right out there yeah. and do it. But when we find a trailer, what are we going to do? The, the boat ain't on a trailer. The boat's in the water. That's what he told us, right? It's got to get it out of the yeah. water. Well, I got an idea. What? Why don't you take the slapping track? Slapping track? You run up and you slap it on the trailer. What is it, GPS thing? Yeah. You slap it on there, you know, that, it'll, sit, it'll sit there for about six weeks, you know? How, how do we know if it's moving? It'll, it'll tell you. It'll notify somebody. As soon as it starts moving, you know, the messenger gets sent to, sent to me, you know, or it is Blackberry. We can have it sent to his Blackberry? Instantly. That might work. Yeah, what's well, the worst can happen? I Give it a shot. You know what? If it doesn't work, I'll take the loss. You're implying that you get paid. <laughs> <laughs> Larry and Rob return to the marina under cover of night to find the boat's trailer and put the GPS tracking device on it. There's always the chance the boat owner could be there, so the agents have to be prepared for anything. Yo, Rob. Well, I found the Malibu over here, but the VIN number doesn't match on the trailer, so. Yeah, got it. 529. 529. Never mind. Boats are identified by hull identification, or HIN numbers. Boat trailers have their own unique vehicle identification number, or VIN. Every boat repo order includes both the boat and trailer's identification numbers. That's not it. I'm walking around in a frickin' marina. This is a waste of my fucking time. Just as Larry is about to give up on the search, Rob has a stroke of luck. Hey. What? It's our trailer. No, nah, is it really? This is our trailer. <laughs> what? Okay. This is our trailer. You know, Mackie with all these high-tech gadgets, um, we're strapping to trees, now we're putting candy bars underneath trailers. For Mackie's sake, I hope all this stuff works. Yeah, I got it. It's on. It's on, that's all you gotta do, right? That's it, put it in the box. That's it. Dude, that went on by itself. All right, let's see what happens. With the GPS device secured to the boat's trailer, all the agents can do is wait for it to signal them that it's on the move. They return to the office to discuss the rest of the night's work. Oh my God. What's going on, Junior? This. <laughs> hey, I'm happy. I'm, hey, hey. We know how to do it, you'll be fine. Holy What? We got a hit of Mr. Goldstein. What? From yeah. what? The Watchman? Yeah. See, I told you that would work. So he just came home. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. All right. What am I doing here? You're well, not doing on. nothing. Come on, let's go. On. You work this one. You know, now, now we got the proof that, you know, this, this global watchman worked. The guy's lying to us. We can go right back and we can get the car. I have the picture, but I still have to physically confront Mr. Goldstein and get him to open up that garage and hand over the keys. All right. Okay. Hello. Hey, how you hey, been? Um, really, seriously, guys. I told you last week when you were here, I'm not Mr. Goldstein. The fact that you told the other repossession company that was here that a couple weeks Mr. ago Goldstein. that you weren't here. What? And well, I'm, there's no other repossession. What are you Whatever. Easy. There's no reason for foul language. Listen, that's you what? backing out of the driveway. That's you. That's the car. How'd you guys get that picture? That's irrelevant, but it's called technology, my friend. The local police department is there. What, am I going to get here? arrested? No, you're not going to get arrested. Actually, the state police, we've dropped the repossession order off at, the, at, the head, at their headquarters at the barracks. Come on. We can do this one of two ways. You can give me the car tonight, or by tomorrow morning, by 9 o'clock, you're financial institution will be contacting a lawyer who will be contacting a judge and instead of us standing here it'll be the sheriff's department with a court order for the car oh, come on i mean that's the way hey listen you know all you had to do is play ball with me the last time i was here and i had to try to help you out now this thing is escalated dude there's pictures of you driving the car i got like 15 different pictures of you all backing right, out of okay, the driveway whatever all right man all right all right. I mean, can I get, I can get your car to back tomorrow? I know. I'm, so, I'm sorry, man. Pick, I just, I'm in a you, tight jam. I just lost my I job. Listen, you know, I understand I mean, that. Everybody's in a tight jam. I got a job to do, too, man. I'm just a messenger here. 
Alright, alright, all right. whatever, man. I'll all just right. give my code. It's, it's in the garage downstairs. I'll just meet you. Okay. Wait, wait right here. Okay. With the evidence right in front of him, the debtor has no choice but to give up the car. There she is, in all her beauty. There's nothing I, I could do, man. The, the guy pulls out a camera, a phone, and shows me pictures of me getting out of my car, so there's nothing I could do. I mean, keys are in it, you said? Yeah, keys are in it. They had the evidence right there. I couldn't lie anymore. I couldn't hide it. That was me. That was the car that they were looking for, so they got me. If you think that you're one step ahead of Jam Recovery, me, my team, you're not. You may be one step ahead in the beginning of the game, but at the end of the day, when the game is over, we're gonna get you. You're not gonna get over on me. It's been a busy week for Jam Recovery. So far, one of their new high-tech devices has come through and helped them to secure a client's 2002 Lincoln. Larry has also decided that after putting in a lot of study, it's time for his son Mackie to take the repossession agent certification test. So you've been studying, you've been doing real good with it. So log in, good luck. Thank you. All right. I mean, it's, it's a, a skiing boat. You know, it's not like something you would put down, say, to shore in okay. salt water. You know, it's not like a, a big fishing boat or a party boat or a yacht. Dude, I got a hit. That trailer's moving. Is it? The slap and track GPS device that Larry and Rob attached to the trailer of the Malibu Wake Setter has sent a signal to Larry's mobile device indicating it's on the move. It's heading down 181. Now that Larry has a lock on the GPS signal, it's a race to catch up to the debtor before he gets too far away. Go down, to head, head towards Woodport. Is he still moving? No. He's parked. Where at? Is he by water? He's by water, by Woodport Road. As the agents hone in on the tracking signal, they begin to formulate a plan for securing the boat. If, if it's hooked up to a truck, there's nothing to stop us from unhooking it and pulling it out by hand. But if the guy's there, we got a confrontation and, you know. He can get in the, the truck guys, and drive away. Right, and you're taking a chance of getting hurt. All right, look, slow down, because it's saying that we're right on top of him. I was really surprised with the slapping track. I mean, it was pretty accurate. And it's saying it's right around this bend. Sure enough, we come around that corner, and there's the boat on the trailer. You want to just go over and talk to him? No, because you know what? He's either going to leave that here, or he's going to take it somewhere else and leave it. And we've already proven we can follow it. You know, this new technology is great. But once again, you still have to deal with the debtor. It could get messy. You don't know. He's going in. He's going inside. Yeah. All right, as soon as he goes inside, we'll go over and hook up. Wait, wait, wait. All right, I'll hop out, Larry. All right, now I'm thinking while well, you're backing him up. No, it's an HIN number. It's not a VIN number. Right. right, right, right. Go ahead. Somebody's got to watch for the guy, too. I got it. While I'm, vid while I'm checking the numbers, Nick, start hooking. All right. After Rob moves the truck into position, Nick and Larry start securing the boat, while Larry keeps an eye out for the potentially Bye. angry debtor. You got a lock? Yeah, it's not locked. Okay. Dude. Dude, this guy's running over. Oh, you get him. What's going on? You didn't make your payments. I got a repo work, dude. Let me see that. Hey, oh, easy. This, this easy. is. This is. Listen, your boat's being repossessed. Fucking your boat's is. being repossessed, dude. Hey, wait, what your you boat's mean? being repo. I hate you. I, you know, I called. You haven't paid I, in I, six months. I have. I just Listen. called. Get, call get the hand off my car. Call the bank. Hey, dude. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Okay. Understand me? Let go. Let go. You understand me? Touch somebody else on my team. I'll put you in this dumpster. 
Boat's being repossessed. Boat's being repossessed. It's on my truck. We have a custody of it. You're done. Contact the bank. You work it. it out. Show me proof that I didn't pay for it. The repossession orders are Show proof. proof. Show me proof. Show me. You don't want to try this. Back off. Cameras. What, what, what the f is this? And you know what? We're on camera. You're f pushing me. I didn't even touch you. Oof. You're you're pushing you me. Touch me. Have a nice day. Is that thing hooked up? Dad. Just take the boat and let's go. All right. What is wrong with you? What? Getting out and gonna hit that guy, guy like that. with a mag light. What's the matter with you? Guy weighed a buck fifty soaking wet. Oh yeah, we're on me. You're gonna throw him in a dumpster. Yeah, he can, you know, act like a jackass. But I was trying control. I was trying to contain the situation. Contain him in a container. Well, <laughs> Next time you hook up the boat and I'll deal with the guy. All right? You guys throw him in a dumpster. Well, it sounded like a good idea at the time. Oh, yeah, sure. I should have threw him in the lake. <laughs> Bro, do you realize well. that if we didn't have that tracker on there, that boat would have been wrapped up. And you never would have found it. And we never would have found it. We had a really good day out there today. We're heading back to the office, and I'm really curious to see how Mackie did on his test. Congratulations, you have passed. My man. Yeah. Your score, 82. That's awesome. Good, Mac. Print certificate. You know, so just passed my certification test, you know. I was acting pretty cocky, but it turns out it was actually pretty hard, you know. But now I'm a full member of JAM, or at least that's what I thought. We got one more test to pass. For what? You gotta pass the Larry Pittman test. Larry Pittman test or what? This is the grand finale. Come on. Well, it's Now that Mackey has passed his recovery agent certification test, he's one step closer to being a bona fide repo man. However, Larry knows that there is no substitute for experience. And unbeknownst to Mackey, Larry has set up an advanced training session for him tonight. So what's going on? What are we doing tonight? We're going to hit a POE for an 03 Freelander. So Mackey thinks that he's going out on his first solo repo tonight. He is going out on a repo. But what Mackie doesn't know is that this whole thing is fake. I set the whole thing up. I recruited a bunch of my friends. This is going to be a test Mackie Pittman is never going to forget. This is a new job? Yeah, it's a brand new job. And let's see how you do. I'm in the truck with my dad and Rob, you know. They're telling me we're going to go do a repo. Then they tell me I'm going to do the repo by myself. And that if I want to get home, I have to get the keys. So I better get this car. Damn, I thought my tests were over. You've done very good with the technology aspect, but see, here's where you're not gonna be able to use technology. Now you gotta get your talk game up. All right, here's the repo order. This is your mission. Good luck. Yeah, we uh, we had a little fun at Maxie's expense. We put him out there to uh, you know see what he can handle and have a little fun, abuse him, and uh, we weren't gonna miss it. So I pulled War Wagon around so we get a good view. Let's go watch this. This is gonna be funny. Ooh, I gotta see this. Uh What's up, boss? How's it going? How are you, man? Can I please? How you doing, tonight? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. We were all set up. We had a bird's eye view on Mackie so we could watch what was going on. I mean, and even Nick showed up to see how Mackie was going to do on his test. Oh, what happened to this ID? Hey, it was a long day, man. So your dog bite this thing? <laughs> test number one. My buddy Tommy's the bouncer at the front door. Good luck getting past him. Doesn't look like you, man. Uh, yeah, it's, I probably wasn't as fat. Yeah. You know, I don't even think this is a real ID. You got, you have a, you have an actual uh, ID. No, ID. man, that's the only uh, copy of the application mm. I have. So, uh, mm. see, 
Unfortunately, I'm gonna need something visual, you know? It's not like Six Flags Great Adventure. I don't have, a, you know, a stick I can measure up and tell you you're not tall enough to go on the ride. So I'm like, come on, man, give me a break. I have to get in this restaurant and talk to this girl to give me her Land Rover, but I can't even get into the restaurant. I, I just need to get in. Just I, I don't need to be. I'm not going in to drink. I just need to go in and handle some business. There's actually a Jamba Juice around the corner. Uh, uh, no, I'm not. I'm not looking for like, a Jamba. I'm not looking for a juice. Here, I'm, I'm here. ID. I'm just, I don't understand uh, what's the problem. With this. If I can drive with this idea, I don't understand what the issue is. Is that the cookie that does, monster? That, that, that does, that, no, that's no, not that, that might get you in. At first, I was like, don't mess with the cookie monster. Then I was like, damn right, that's cookie monster. Let me in. All right, you know what? I'm feeling the love. Okay. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. it. All right. Test number one, passed. Just here. Okay. <laughs> hey, excuse me, what's up? Do you have a bartender named Jamie? Yeah, that's her right here. Jamie, hey, how are you? Um, can I speak with you for a moment? That's Jamie. She's a great bartender, but she's an even better actress. Test number two, Mackie. Good luck. Uh, I work with Jam Recovery. Uh, it's, in, it's in regard to your your card. Your um, you've actually been blinking on your payments, and I'm actually here on behalf of the bank. So, you know, um, it's been, when you sign the contract with the bank for the loan, you know, it authorizes us to come to your place of employment in a situation like this. So, uh, okay, well, maybe you want, you want to step to the side, maybe? Yeah. Okay. You want a drink? Huh? No, no, thank you. I appreciate it, though. Uh, sorry. Uh, this is your possession order. You know, it's, it's, it's from the bank, so, no. no they, 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 they just sent this job out to us, so, you know, maybe, like, Seriously, I'm in school, and I can barely. I can. I. I, I haven't. I have. Can I talk? Can yes. I? Jamie, I'm. I. I, 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 I feel like, for you. You know, you can be any big dumb drunk buffoon, and I got that. You put this girl in front of me crying. I don't know what to do with myself at this point. I'm a mess. I can't. I won't be able to get it back. I. I, I I, I understand. I'm sorry. I'm in the same boat. I'm a college kid, too. I go to school here, too. And I struggle just getting by. You know, finally, I get this girl to take me to her car. Test number two, passed. Of course, when I get there, there's another car blocking it in. Oops. I wonder how that happened. But you know what, Mackie? You got bigger things to worry about. Oh, we, could, we could work something out now. Do you know whose car is behind it? That's, that's, not, that's not an issue. That's not an issue. If you give me the keys, you know, you can, I'll, I'll tell the bank it was a voluntary repo. You know, there wasn't that much of an issue. You know, we'll, we'll tell them that you were well, fine. How much is it going to cost me altogether? Um, you're looking at about $900. You know, I told you she was good. Is there anything I can do to just have no, give you, you can, let me give me like one day, one more day? Is, is there anything that you might want to grab now? I don't have, I don't have anything anymore. I'm really sorry to do this to you. I can see it in your eyes and I tell you, I know you're going through a rough time, but. Okay, well, I don't know what you're doing. Yo, man, what are you doing? Why are you making a cry? Come on, bro. All of a sudden, I'm about to get the keys. You know, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna get past the car blocking it in. Here comes the bouncer and the bartender yelling at me now. Test number three. Please, hey, hey, don't go ahead. Don't approach me. Hey, stop, stop. Hey, 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 come on. Yo, please, please, please. I'm gonna politely back away from you because there's two of you and I'm not comfortable with the situation. So now I'm freaking out that this girl's over here crying and her two friends are screaming at me because they want to kill me. So at this point, my first job might be my last. Now, please back away from me. I'll tell you the situation. I'll tell you the situation. Hey, what's going on? Right, listen, listen, Jamie. Jamie, can you, can you explain to, can you explain to her? What's going on here? All of a sudden, I see my dad, I see Rob, I see Nick. What the hell are they doing here? Hey, listen, listen. It's like no, four on two, two okay? Here. No, it's three on two. So let's, let's relax okay, listen, a little bit. Listen, listen, listen. Relax. Actually, I think it's four on one. Relax. It's five on one. It's five on one. There's no problem. Hold on, hold on. Calm back. down. It's five on one. You've okay. been punked. You passed your test. <laughs> what? <laughs> test number three passed. Mackie did really good. He kept his cool. He didn't get agitated. He avoided a fight. And in the end, Mackie learned a valuable lesson. As much as I give him a hard time, he knows dad's always got his back. I set all of this up. You've been pumped. <laughs> yeah. You did good. Brad, have the one with your <laughs> you know, I guess it comes with the job. It's training day, Larry Pittman style. Would have got the keys at least, you know? <laughs> no, you did good. Congrats. You know, the new technology is real good, but this is still a people business. Times are tough right now on people. In this day and age, it's just, it's tough for everybody. But 
I got good people on my team. My son's gonna be a damn good repo man. So tonight was a good night. Mm -hmm.